I'm going to take you through my career as a photographer, the impact that personal projects have had on me and my career and my mindset and my passion, and I hope to inspire you guys to start your own personal project with whatever that is creatively that you want to do. The first thing that got me into photography was I can't sit still. And photography allowed me to get out of the classroom, to explore the city that I was living in, to meet people, and more importantly, to tell their stories, and to be creative. So that's the short version of how I got started in photography. Basically, I couldn't do what you're doing now. I couldn't sit still. I had to get out. And now what drew me to personal projects was quite deeper. I was into photography. I was studying different photographers. I was studying uh, portrait photography, fashion photographers, documentary, photojournalists. And I would go to the bookstore, which we don't even have much anymore in the United States. But I would go to the bookstore as much as I could. I would sit down with my coffee. I couldn't afford these books. They were too expensive. I was a student. And I would flip through books of famous photographers and try to look to be inspired by their work and to feel something from their work. And one day I came across a very famous photographer, and his name is Philip Jones Griffith. And Philip Jones Griffith did an amazing book about victims of Agent Orange. And as I flipped through those pages, I turned through those pages. Wow, those are powerful images. And when I looked at those images, I sat and I, and I cried. I shed so many tears looking at these images, and it really made me feel something. And it made me truly, really understand the impact that photography can have on a person. It had an impact on me. It made me cry. It made me want to go out and tell stories. It made me want to do this with my photography. And so it really made me understand the power of photography. And I struggled with, can I do that? Can I, can I have that kind of impact? Can I make people feel something from my images? Can I tell stories that have an impact on people? And this is an image I took in Cambodia. I left San Francisco. I dropped out of college. Don't drop out. I just did it. It happened to work for me. I dropped out of college with a year left, and I decided to go get my education abroad. I went to Sim Reap, and I did a story about tuberculosis. Not a true story. I just started floating around looking for stories. I took a photograph of this man who happened to have tuberculosis. And I would show this image. It's not maybe my, my best image, but this image made me believe in myself, and it made me believe again in the impact that my photography can have. This man, you can see, is quite weak, quite tired. He couldn't even hold himself up here with his feet. He had to have this plastic container. And what that image did was, though, I, I showed that image to a nurse. And she looked at that image. And it made her want to do something. It made her ask questions. What's wrong with this man? He has tuberculosis, yes. But he's been in the hospital for a long time. So why isn't he getting better? What's wrong with him? She had a, she had a doctor from Doctors Without Borders come and investigate, come and uh, check out this man. He was HIV positive. Now, she got him on proper medication. Months later, his health improved a lot, and he left the hospital. And I didn't do anything special, but the power, the impact that one image could have to make someone do something really made me believe in myself, really made me want to explore stories and personal projects. What was my first project? Well, guess what? I came here to Vietnam a long time ago, over a decade ago. And I started my first project inspired by Philip Jones Griffith. I started my first project on Agent Orange victims in Bavi, not too far from here. And I spent weeks at an orphanage documenting the children here. And it really had an impact on me. I'm not going to talk much. I'm just going to let my images tell the story. And during this time was the only time that I really could focus on my photography, on telling a story. In school, I always had an assignment. I was always told to do this, this, and this. This was from my heart, from me. And I learned so much about myself. I had time to slow down. This was truly my education. Yes, I learned a lot in school. But wow, what I learned during that time, during this project, still affects me today. And still, it made me become the photographer I am. It taught me how to slow down and be patient. That might seem weird because I'm talking very fast and moving around, but it really did teach me to slow down in my photography. It taught me the art of storytelling, my style of storytelling, how to find that identity as a photographer. I got to experiment with my composition, with the way I exposed for light. So many things happened during that time because my mind was so clear and so clean. It was only focused on telling stories and focused on honing my craft. And that led to a career, and which was great. And, and that led to a career shooting for a lot of different magazines, a lot of different newspapers. And I love photography. You can see I have a passion, photography, a passion for photography. So that led me to a lot of editorial work, a lot of different assignments. 
uh, traveling around the world, telling stories. For the New York Times, I shot over 100 assignments around the world. But I love photography so much, it also led me to wedding photography. <laughs> I do a lot of different things in my photography. Commercial photography, conceptual photography, uh, and I do a lot of hotel photography. Unfortunately, black and white photography and stories that are quite depressing, <laughs> it's tough to make a living out of that. And I did this for over a decade, and I didn't do any personal projects. I used that, I used that time to hone my skills, and a lot of what I'm doing in these images they might not look the same, but I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about my, my style of photography, my vision as a photographer, my vision as an artist. That was so important to me, and it really impacted my career. But something was missing. I missed that hunger. I missed that passion that I had to tell personal, you know, to have a personal project, to tell a story without a client telling me what to do, without a writer's words telling me what to photograph, without a shot list. And I do like that stuff. I don't want to say I don't, but something was missing. Why I got started in photography, that passion to tell stories that mean something to me, to, to get a story out there that comes from my mind and my heart and my vision. And so I went 10 years without telling any stories, but something, ha something good has happened recently. I have started a new project. I finally started again a personal project. I'm excited to share it with you. I've shared some images online. Some of them are new. I'm, I'm quite vulnerable in my images, so maybe I'll hide a little bit off to the side. I'm not a vulnerable person, but this is a new project that I just started a little bit over a year ago. Exciting part about this, it's, it's about Vietnam. The concept of this project is to photograph Vietnam from above and below with a series of diptychs. So every above will have a corresponding below. And the, really, what this, the reason I'm doing this project is I owe this country something. I've been here for more than 10 years. People have let me into their homes, photographed their families, told me their stories, you know, fed me, <laughs> and I'm big, they fed me a lot of food. Uh, people have been so wonderful to me in this country, and, and this is all I know how to do. Photography is what I know how to do, so this is the way I want to pay something back, or just a tribute that I want to do, a small token of appreciation from such a wonderful country and a wonderful culture. And the concept, the underlying thing, I've done a lot of depressing stories. The nice thing about this project is, the only theme I've given myself is beauty. And yes, the parameters of above and below, but I want to capture the beauty of this country. Some of the dip text, some of the series will be conceptual. You know, they, they might match by texture. Some are a little bit more obvious. I'm still finding the identity, but again, that's the beautiful thing of a personal project. It is giving me time to explore again. I am alive again. I am excited again to take pictures, to tell stories, and to really find my vision again. You should always be working on that as any artist, keep trying to reinvent yourself, keep pushing yourself. Again, what I learned in that first project came with me my entire career for 10 years. And here I am again, I've started this project, you can see my excitement, I'm fired up about it. It's allowed me to explore aerial photography, something I've only done in my commercial work. So again, I'm exploring something new, I'm trying something new. This is giving me time, this is my workshop, really. All of you, I'm telling you, spend the time to do this. And it's a totally different style from what I've shot before, you can see. All Vietnam, all different provinces, and the ultimate goal is for me to visit as many provinces as I can. It'll probably take me a couple more years. What's next? How do you get started on your personal project? You just do it. You lace up your boots, you get out there, and you do it. Whatever you're looking for, whatever you're... Whatever you're into creatively, whatever your art is, get out there, set aside time for a personal project. It's so important, it's crucial. It's not just crucial for your art and for your craft, it's crucial for your soul. You need it, I needed it, I hope you need it. I encourage you all, now what? Go start your personal project. Wrap it up, Justin. Okay, my slideshow's talking again. Thank you so much, I appreciate you guys coming here today, thank you.